Afternoon YouTube, it's your boy Leonard to be cool. Welcome to my channel. Like if you like the video, subscribe if you're not. If you already are subscribed, thank you and thank you for clicking on this video. About to dive right in on a Ridley Scott movie. All the money in the world. First of all, this movie, from a director's standpoint, is amazing. I mean, like, sir, Ridley Scott made it, of course. Aesthetically, it's beautiful. Let's, let's just throw it out there so we don't revisit it anymore. The controversies in this movie and surrounding this movie was massive. Like, with the money, differences between Michelle and Mark Wahlberg in the reshoots. And they were from the same agency, apparently. And the whole Kevin Spacey thing. That was just a whole not a situation but let's go into the movie like it's weird that money had to deal with both sides of the movie behind the scenes and in the visual element of it anyway i'm just gonna dive right in ridley scott never disappoints you know what i'm saying so i was never surprised this was like i think the first movie i've watched of ridley scott where you know it was just a true event story it wasn't some sci-fi thing because i'm a big ridley scott fan from the sci-fi aspect i don't know if he's done other you know life type of stories but this one was a good one uh michelle williams i'll start with her she was amazing in this role like there's nothing to hold against her she delivered she looked like a concerned mother for her son, even though they had less screen time. Like, I still felt like she was concerned for her child. Like, they had less screen time together since Paul kind of went to a metamorphosis and was a kid, then he was an adult, then, I mean, young adult, then he got kidnapped, and basically, they only had that scene where he's coming back from his father's drug, alcohol-induced adventure. And also when they reunited the end in the car scene, that was sweet. She was amazing in this. She, yeah, she had the right to fight for the money. I know I said I wasn't going to talk about that controversy again, but I'm just saying. Christopher Plummer, the dude who replaced Voldemort. <laughs> he was amazing, man. Yo, his lack of giving a shit was crazy from, for the Getty dude. What's his name? J. Paul Getty? Was it? Yeah, let's just call him that. He was like amazing. And the fact that he shot this in a few days with Ridley is, is amazing to think about actually. And it was a thing to behold. I really enjoyed the hell out of this movie. Christopher Plummer, well done, man. You deserve all the noms you got. Mark Wahlberg, the dude who was caught in controversy and didn't even know what he was doing would be such a thing. But in this movie, he was amazing as, what What was his name again? Um, I think Fetcher Chase. He, the CIA agent who doesn't use a gun, who just makes deals. He was an intriguing character. And he got a little of his backstory as he had that moment where he was chilling with um, uh, Getty. That's their surname, right? Getty Oils. They own the oil company and other stuff in their family. It's trippy. That is a true story. I know it says true events. means they dramatized most of the things and added characters and scenes and all that. But it's still based off of true events. I wonder if they got like an inside source, like one of the Getty family told them what they know. That would be a trippy like, like revelation. Anyway, let's just talk about the opening sequence for a young second. The whole black and white switching to color in Rome 1973, that was amazing. Don't mind me looking down because I'm looking at my notes, you know what I'm saying? Ah, it was amazing. Like seeing Peter and Paul just walk through the whole 
food court situation with cars passing by him as he starts to turn on the cigarette, walks by, and you see the sequence of cars cut, walk, like pass him. The camera follows him in order one take, and you see the, the color grade change. It was amazing shot. Then you just get thrown into the year he was. It was still the year, right? Yeah, it was still the same year. But July 10 is when his grandfather found out that he got kidnapped. The way he was like to his secretary, leave me. Like he did not just hear what he heard. She was even shocked. Christopher Plummer, give it up for the dude, man. He's like, I'm giving a fuck. It was amazing. <laughs> also, those Playboy interviews and stuff he had. Yeah, he was talking about money. Like he had the keys, like he knew what he was talking about. It was amazing. Then we talk about Paul again. That was a weird kidnapping situation. First they wanted him to be comfortable, like the money was more important. Like having him intact while they give back the kid kind of made, I think from the kidnapper's point of view, it was like, yo, know, if the kid is still healthy and untouched, they'll leave us alone after they give us the money. Yo, but also his relationship with that kidnapper dude, the, the, the lone survivor of the first kidnapping group was, was a weird friendship, like Stockholm Syndrome, that's what it's called, right? When you get attached to somebody who kidnaps you or the kidnapper gets attached to the person they kidnap or some shit like that. But yeah, it was an interesting relationship. Also that whole sequence of Paul and his grandfather when they were younger and he was taking him to the wrong like buildings that were collapsed and stuff that he owned them like and he, he talked about when he first approached them they were telling him they don't sell these things and stuff like that but he got them to sell it was an amazing story though like overall I would say the story was amazing. When they saw Paul though, that was another trippy moment. I was like, what is happening? Cause those guys looked like they meant business. Cause they were selling fake bags and whatnot. There was like an inter like an empire of the baddies, if you know what I'm saying. And Paul's idea, the breakout was amazing also. I wouldn't have thought of that, honestly. He was a smart kid. Let's talk about um, the trinket, that Egyptian trinket he gave Paul. Uh, his grandfather gave him. That was a museum, like artifact, like the, the, those gift shop things. Like she really, I was also rooting for her that moment. I was like, oh, she's going to save her kid, but nah. Little did she know that that dude bamboozled the whole family just like to sell him a dream, bro. and to think that he couldn't actually use his money, so he just spent it on acquiring things, which was the fortune, I guess. Also, when he, when he cut off Paul's ear, oh, that was a, a gritty scene that led to the picture at the newspaper, led to his mother sending a thousand copies of the newspaper to the grandfather which was also a slow-mo sequence that I liked Christopher Plummer delivered, yo Did, did Christopher Plummer as character die the same time Paul was rescued? Like, there's something I wanna know Like, I'm, I'm gonna check if Paul got to reunite with his grandfather again and the fact that the mother ended up getting the estate even though she didn't want it, she just wanted her kids, or it was admirable as fuck. And the fact that he had so many iconic faces to his collection, then he had to put himself. I loved how that was the last shot, like his face. And it was cool that his art collection was given, was put in the Getty Museum in Los Angeles. I gotta check that shit out. I wanna check this shit out. Like, I love movies that make me want to check out history. Like period pieces that can make you do that, amazing. The art, the production design was amazing. Camera movement was amazing. 
it was something to behold. I give this movie 8 out of 10. I'm legit going to revisit it. I'm going to end this video here so I don't dawn on too long. But yeah, do subscribe if you're not subscribed. Like this video if you like my thoughts about this movie. Anyway, deuces.